Hey everybody, this is page 18 of our quadratics unit and this is more applications. Um, so, number five is talking about a bridge. On a suspension bridge, the roadway is hung from cables hanging between support towers. So when I draw my picture, you have a tower here and you have a tower here and you have the cable hanging in between, okay? The cable of one bridge is in the shape of a parabola. So we can assume that this is a parabola shape and it has this equation. Y is the height in feet of the cable above the road. So down here, this will be the road at a distance X feet from the support tower. So every time you move away from the support tower, you're moving X distance away. So this can be all different numbers. This is the cable. Once again, it's in the shape of a parabola. This is the road, okay? So for part A, what is the closest the cable comes to the roadway? Well, if the cable is in the shape of a parabola, then the closest point that it would get to the road would be right here in the middle. This is where the cable is closest to the road. So that is the vertex or the minimum of the cable. So really what you're looking for here is the minimum, which is the vertex. So we can have our calculator help us find that by putting the equation into um, your y equals and graphing it. Okay, so let's do that. I've got mine put in right there. Go ahead and type yours in. And since I'm not sure how this is going to look, I'm going to just do zoom standard and then we'll adjust our window from there. So after you have it typed in, go ahead, hit zoom number six. Okay. Oh, doesn't look like anything showed up. So that means we should zoom out. So zoom number three, hit enter again. I got a little bit of a graph. That's not very good. I'd like it to look a little bit better. So I'm going to zoom out one more time. Zoom, number three, and hit enter again. There you go. So now we've got a parabola. I'm looking for the minimum of the parabola. This represents how the cables are draped from one tower to the next for a suspension bridge. So the minimum would be right here. So we're going to go second, trace, down to minimum, number three. Now we're going to go a little bit to the left, just like we did on page 17. Hit enter, go a little bit to the right, and hit enter, and hit enter one more time, and it tells us that vertex. So the x coordinate is basically 35. If we round up, that would be 35. The Y coordinate is 27.5. So that means that on my picture here, if I were to draw it, you would go out 35 and you would go up 27.5, okay? And I believe that this is being measured in feet. So this would be 35 feet and that would be 27.5 feet. So part A, what is the closest the cable comes to the roadway? So what's this distance? What's the closest it comes to the road? It comes within 27.5 feet. Part B, how far from the support tower does this occur? Well, if your support tower is right here, that close point is from here to that spot right below the vertex. That's the X coordinate that we just found. So this is... 35 feet. Okay? So with word problems in this unit, you're really going to be looking for vertexes or um, sometimes you're even going to look for x-intercepts, but that's all you have to do. Just graph them in the y equals and for in this case, just find the vertex. And the calculator does a nice job showing you that. Here's the steps to do that. Second, trace, and then you're going to choose you're either going to choose minimum or you're going to choose maximum. 
Okay. Okay. So we're going to go on to quadratic predictions. Um, one of the things you need to know how to do in Algebra 2 is how to come up with a model. A model is just a fancy word for an equation that represents information that you're given in a table. So number six is talking about tickets to a school play. So if we have N tickets to a school play sold T days after the tickets went on sale, you're given this information down here. This represents our table down here. If I put a box around this, this will be your table. Okay, so on the first day, 32 tickets were sold. On the second day, 64 tickets were sold. And on the fourth day, 74 tickets are sold. So part A is asking you to find a quadratic model for the data. So a model, remember, is just an equation. Okay, so we're going to have our calculator really help us out with this. Okay, this is how you do this. You're going to get out of everything, hit stat, then you're going to hit edit, and I have got lots of stuff in my calculator, so I'm going to clear out everything in L1 and L2. To do that, see how I have L1 highlighted, okay? You hit clear and enter. It'll clear the whole column for you. Then go over to L2, go right up on the actual L2. Hit clear and enter. If you um, accidentally hit delete and get rid of the column, let me know and I'll show you how to get all of that back. Because you definitely need L1 and L2. You don't want to use the different um, numbered lists over here. So now I'm going to put my table into the calculator. So this will be the L1 and this will be the L2. So it will be 1 two and four and then L2 will be 32, 64, and 74. Okay? Okay, so far so good. So we've entered the stuff into L1 and L2. Now we're gonna hit stat, go over to calc, and go down to quadratic regression. Don't worry, I have a little card for you with all these steps on it. And after a while, you'll have this memorized. It'll be a fast process. So we're picking quad regression because I'm looking for a quadratic equation. In Algebra 1, you would have picked linear regression. Now in Algebra 2, we're going to do quadratic regression. So hit Enter. Now you're going to go down to Store Regression Equation. Okay. Hit vars, y vars, function, y1, hit enter, and go down and hit calculate. All right, so this pops up on your screen. These numbers represent a, b, and c of your quadratic regression, of your equation. And that's your answer for part a. You're going to write it like an actual equation. So it'll be y equals, and then it'll be negative 9x squared plus 59x minus 18. That's your answer for part A. So now we're going to use the model to find the number of tickets sold on day 5. So I wanted to change this to day five because um, I didn't like the answer for day seven. So I, I would like you to change it to day five. Just scratch this out. Put five right here, please. And so if I want to find the number of tickets sold on day five, I don't have that in my table. So I can use my equation that I just came up with to help me to like help me predict how many tickets are going to be sold on day five. So we're going to go second graph brings us to the table. Now my graph's got, my table's got huge numbers in it because of the problems that I had done earlier. Um, and so I need to get it all the way down to five. A really fast way to do that is second window. Okay, second window is your table set. 
And so all you need to do is put a 5 there, because that's where we're interested. We want to look at the table when x equals 5. So now go second, graph, and it'll give you the answer. This answer right here that lines up with 5 is the number of tickets that will be sold. So number of tickets sold on day 5 is 52 tickets. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Part C. When was the greatest number of tickets sold? The largest number of tickets. And so to do that, we can look at the graph. Okay, so this graph is very skinny because it's got our old window in it. So I'm going to go zoom, standard. Oh, you can't see that very well. So I'm going to zoom out once. I still can't see that very well. Zoom out again. Okay, I guess we're back to that picture. That's as good as we, we're going to get. Um, I'm going to change my window. Hit window. And go down to... Um, let's make x negative 1. And let's make x max 6. Okay, hit graph. There you go. That's the picture that I'm going for. So the maximum number of tickets sold is at the vertex of this parabola. So we're going to hit second, trace, maximum. Go a little bit to the left, hit enter. And then go a little bit to the right, hit enter. And enter one more time. And it will give you the maximum. So at 3.23, you have 78.69 tickets. So when was the greatest number of tickets sold? It was sold on day three. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Let's do number seven. All right. So for number seven, the table gives the number of pairs of skis sold in a sporting goods store for several months last year. Find a quadratic model for the data. So that just means find an equation using January as month one, February as month two, and so forth. And then part B, use the model to predict the number of pairs of skis sold in November. And then Part C, in what month were the fewest skis sold? So, here we go. This is a chance for us to go through that process again. Remember that you have that little, that little piece of paper that has all the steps on it as well. So hit Stat, Edit. Now we're going to put your months in. Remember, January was 1, February is 2, March is 3, and so forth. So we have January, so we put a 1. March, which is going to be the third month of the year, so we'll put a three. And then May, which is the fifth month of the year, put a five. Then you're going to put 82, 42, and 18. Okay? We need to come up with a quadratic equation that represents this information in the table. So you're going to hit stat, calc. Go down to quadratic regression, hit enter. Then you're going to go down to store regression equation, hit vars, which is right here, vars. Then go over to y vars, and then function y1 and calculate. That's going to give us our equation. So that's your answer to part A. Plug the numbers in. Y equals 2x squared minus 28x plus 108. Okay? Part B. Use the model to predict the number of pairs of skis sold in November. So we have to think about, all right, November. What month is November if January is the first one, February is the second one? Well, November is... 
when x equals 11, okay? So we're going to go to our table set, second window, put 11 in, and then second graph, and that answer right next to the 11 is going to give you the number of skis sold. So in November, it would be 42 pairs of skis. See, in what month were the fewest skis sold? So, one thing that we can do is go up and down our table. So in December, there's 60. That's 12. We just found November, there was 42. If we go up, that would give you October 28. Nine, which is September, would give you 18 pairs of skis. We're getting smaller and smaller. Um, August was 12 pairs of skis. Uh, July was 10 pairs of skis. That, we're getting pretty low. Oh, and then six, that would be June. Back up to 12 then 18, then 28, then 42, and 60, and 82. So it looks like the seventh month is the month that you get the least amount of skis being sold, which makes sense. And that seventh month is July. So try these problems. I know these table problems are very involved, but I promise you, um, as soon as you get practicing and the more you practice, the easier this is going to get. Um, and it's, it's quite easy. Um, ask me lots of questions if you need to. Work on your practice problems.